If there's one thing I've noticed compiling my list of horror comics released throughout the year, it's that the number of horror comics have been on the rise. Seems people remember when horror was king in those great EC horror days, proving that comics has always been a wonderful medium to explore the dark side of sequential storytelling. Since I write my own comics, I don't want to call the following reviews, but I do want to let people know that these great comics exist and should be sought after by any respectable horror fan. Here are my 13 favorite horror comics presented in not much of a particular order from 2022. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below, share this video with all of your social media addicted pals, click subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell for notifications. Here are my 13 favorite horror comics of 2022. Maniac of New York, The Bronx is Burning, is from Aftershock Comics. The story is by Elliot Kalan, with art by Andrea Muti. While the third installment of this series was due out right about now, I fear the fact that Aftershock claimed bankruptcy last week will mean we won't find out how the saga of the Masked Maniac will turn out anytime soon. But until that last chapter is released, the first two trades for Elliot Kalan and Andrea Muti's stellar urban serial mass murderer epic are out and both are contained installments that you can enjoy on your own in this suspenseful and thrilling series. The second series, which was released this year, had the maniac tear a path through New York City, beginning with a private school and ending in a stadium full of baseball fans. It's basically what we all wanted to see in Jason Takes Manhattan, but never got. Creepshow is from Skybound Entertainment. The story is by various artists and writers. This series has been a high-quality mixed bag of notable talent like Paul Dini, John McCree, Francisco Francavilla, Jorge Corona, and scores of other top writers and artists gathered to bring the tales from the Creeper to life. Anyone who was a fan of those old EC comics and the Creepshow movies will want to seek this series out. It's only on its third issue, so you haven't missed out on much of the madness so far. Out is from AWA Upshot Incorporated. The story is by Rob Williams, with art by Will Conrad and Marco Lesko. This is a wonderful mashup of bone-chilling horror and white-knuckle military action, set during the height of World War II. At a prison camp, a group of American soldiers, including a Native American translator, fight to survive. But unbeknownst to them, the Nazis have a secret weapon hidden in the encampment, a slumbering vampire. While this story was a bit reminiscent of the World War II flashbacks in Del Toro's The Strain series, it still was a gorgeously gritty series by artists Will Conrad and Marco Lesko, and wonderful character work by Rob Williams. Little Monsters is from Image Comics, the story is by Jeff Lemire, with art by Dustin Nguyen. The idea of vampires eternally trapped as children has been explored before in Interview with a Vampire and other films and books, but none of them have been brought to life in such a thoughtful and soul-searing story from top-tier writer Jeff Lemire. Little Monsters depicts a world where child vampires are all that's left, and the world is lacking humans for them to feed upon. Lemire channels Lord of the Flies here, and Nguyen brings out wonderful images of juxtaposition between innocence and the macabre. Nice House on the Lake is from DC Comics. The story is by James Tiny and the Fourth, with art by Alvaro Martinez Bueno. While this series has been delayed quite a bit this year, we're finally getting to the end of James Tinian and Alvaro Martinez Bueno's story of the end of the world and a chosen few souls selected to survive it due to a reality-warping alien they thought was their best friend. There's an awful lot of sitting and talking in this series, so I don't blame you if you've noped out by now, but I'm in for the long haul to see what happens to these survivors. Will they tear each other apart, or find some way to escape the alien's protective field around the titular nice house? And if they do get out, what awaits them on the other side of the barrier? 
Tinian has an awful lot of story to tell in the final issue, which happens to be dropping today in comic shops. The Silver Coin is from Image Comics. The story is by Various, with art tying it all together by Michael Walsh. Even a weaker issue of The Silver Coin is better than most horror comics out there. I haven't been in love with every issue, but the art by Michael Walsh links and steers these terror tales centering on an especially cursed coin in unexpected and twisted directions. This book recently went on hiatus, but I can't wait until Walsh comes back with more stories of sheer madness and the ultimate in macabre. Apache Delivery Service is from Dark Horse Comics. The story is by Matt Kint, with art by Tyler Jenkins. This is a wonderful mix of the horrors of war meets the supernatural, as a soldier decides to go AWOL in the middle of the Vietnam conflict in order to track down lost treasure. Unfortunately for him, and his seemingly lunatic companion, the gold belongs to a coven of witches. This is an off-the-wall story that has a solid moral core, as well as intense action and terrifying visuals from the scratchy and emotive art of Tyler Jenkins. The Closet is from Image Comics. The story is by James Tinian IV, and art by Gavin Fullerton. One of Tinian's more subtle and emotionally impactful horror series, The Closet centers on the childhood fear that there is a monster in the closet. A young boy who is witnessing and attempting to process his father's midlife crisis and mental breakdown, as well as his parents drifting apart, believes that the monster he left in his New York apartment has followed him across the country and into their new home. This series holds complex horrors, both psychologically damning and emotionally searing. While it reminded me a lot of Cat's Eye, Gavin Fullerton's skill at making monsters and emotionally horrifying scenes makes it all feel wholly original. The Crimson Cage is from AWA Upshot, Incorporated. The story is by John Lees, with art by Alex Cormack. My pal John Lees upped his game this year and delivered an absolutely astonishing mashup of wrestling, horror, and Shakespeare. A wrestler decides to sacrifice everything in order to attain the World Wrestling Championship, but how long he can hold on to it once he attains his goal is the real and terrifying question. This one is brought to life by the vibrant, bloody, and kinetic pencils of Alex Cormick. A Town Called Terror is from Image Comics. The story is by Steve Niles, with art by Zyman Krudransky. Steve Niles' return to comics was a big and belastic ode to old-school horror films as a man who thought he left his monstrous legacy behind him when he left A Town Called Terror is called back to unearth undead sins and even more undead monsters. Simon Gudransky delivers mouth-watering panels filled with gore, mayhem, and all kinds of things that go bump in the night. This was one of the best horror series I've seen from Niles in years. I hope they're doing a sequel sooner rather than later. Red Room Trigger Warnings is from Fantagraphics Books. The story and art are by Ed Piscor. The follow-up to the first gut-wrenching series, Red Room, proved to be just as gory, nauseating, and generally upsetting as the original. Piscor's attention to detail and the outsider way he designs his panels by filling them to the very edge with imagery that'll turn your stomach while your toes curl is truly unique. Piscor opens the curtain a little further to reveal more aspects of the deep web torture site where high rollers pay big bucks to see bodies disassembled in wholly gruesome ways. This one is not for the squeamish. Ice Cream Man is from Image Comics. The story is by W. Maxwell Prince, with art by Martin Morazzo. Returning from its hiatus, Ice Cream Man continues to be the anthology to beat in comics. W. Maxwell Prince has a true gift of telling sublime done-in-one stories, the likes I haven't seen since Beautiful Stories for Ugly Children was released in the late 80s and early 90s. Every issue is filled with uncanny images by Martin Morazzo and unnerving tales that will make you do a full-body pee shiver numerous times while reading. One of my favorite ongoing series of late, Ice Cream Man delivers every time. Finally, we've got the two-in-one Something is Killing the Children and House of Slaughter from Boom Studios. Both are written by James Tiny IV, with art by Werther Deladera. I clump these two together as a cheat, but Tinian's world of ferocious monsters and the deadly guild sworn to destroy them is a tightly woven story that crosses over and back again with itself. 
no matter if it's a tale set in the present with a horrifying doppelganger monster, or one set in the past showing how key players like Erica and Aaron were drafted into the Order, every issue inches along deeper into the dark abyss that I don't mind wallowing in. It's got heart and soul and all kinds of bloody battles and carnage with gruesome and original monsters. Plus it all looks astounding with the wispy line work by Werther Deladera. This is simply the best one-two punch in horror comics. Well, that's it. I hope you guys will run out and pick up a few of these books. While horror comics are on the upswing, the industry as a whole has seen better days. Go out and support horror comics and pick up a few with that hard-earned money that you didn't spend during Christmas. And if there are other horror comics you dig, let me know about them down in the comments. You're doomed. You're doomed.